Hey there, welcome to the YouTube channel. I pray that this message encourages you and it helps you grow and become more like Jesus. And make sure you hit the subscribe button so you can continue to grow and learn more. Enjoy. Ooh, you guys are excited today. Ooh. Someone's life must have changed. Someone must have a testimony in here. Praise God. You guys, you guys were like me in my house this past week when I was studying for my sermon. I couldn't sit down. I had to get up and praise God. And that's what happens sometimes. A spirit of praise comes over people. There is nothing wrong with that. Something I learned a long time ago is you don't know people's story. You don't know what people bring into a church. We don't know what they're going through at work. And we need to be gracious. And we need to understand that some people are praising God because they've been saved from life or from death and have been brought to life. Man, what a joy it is to celebrate. What a day to celebrate today. Thank you, God. Well, good morning and happy Easter and Resurrection Day. It's so good to have you, the church, any guests, anyone who's seeking God today. I pray that you would have an open heart and mind to the message today. I pray that God opens your hearts to receive as well, to believe in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. I'm praying that right now up front. I've been thinking about this time 2,000 years ago, putting myself in the shoes of, of those early disciples and followers and I, and I thought about Mary Magdalene and what, it, what a devastating weekend Easter started out for her. They didn't call it Easter at that time. They, it was just another weekend. But Friday started off terrible because her savior and miracle worker was on the cross. She had been delivered from demons and she saw her savior and miracle worker on the cross dying. I can't imagine what that was like because she put her hope her faith in him, and she was changed. She couldn't say, she couldn't deny, I, I, I'm not changed. She was changed. Demons left her body. She lived a whole different life. She was one of the most faithful women, faithful followers of Jesus Christ. She was there at his crucifixion. Everyone else ran, and she's seeing her miracle worker, Savior and Lord. She even knew when the tomb was closed with a stone. She saw it. And what's crazy is at this time, when this happened, the Sabbath had begun. Now think about this for a moment. The Sabbath is a day of rest, okay? So she, she goes from this crisis of her Savior, a miracle worker, dying on the cross. And then as the day goes on, it turns into the day of rest and Sabbath. And now she has to think about that on her day of rest. Saturday. Silent, suffering, Hopeless Saturday. Anyone been through one of those recently? Anyone been through a hopeless Saturday, quote unquote? A season where you're just struggling. The struggle is real. You're suffering. There's sadness and sorrow. Well, her day, it was a rough one. And with a Sabbath, that means nothing to preoccupy yourself. No cooking, no preparations, no taking care of anything else resting but guarantee you me they were not resting that day their mind was unable to rest because the person they put their hope in had died now a custom of that day would be that the women would go to the tomb and anoint the the, the loved one the body of the loved one with spices and oil and so mary and other women were going to do that expecting to find a dead body his faithful followers expecting to find a dead body. But they didn't remember what he had said, that on the third day, I will rise. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 28, and we'll be in John 20. If you have your Bibles, please open up to Matthew 28. If you are going to use your phone, you can use that as well. Matthew 28, John 20 will be where we go next. And this is, what is, this is the story of the resurrection. It says, early on Sunday morning, I got up early this Sunday morning, by the way. I saw the sunrise. It was great. I was tired, though. But there was something about the joy of this day that got me up. I couldn't wait to be here. 
Early on Sunday morning, as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. His face shone like lightning, and his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him, and they fell into a dead faint. Then the angel spoke to the woman, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He isn't here. He is risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Come see where his body was lying. How many know that when something good has happened in your life, you don't want anything bad to happen? And when something really good, like Jesus comes in, you're not going to, you're not going to, that's going to go in one ear and out the other. I'm going to die after three. I'm going to suffer and die. I'm going to suffer and die. They didn't hear that part. They didn't want to believe that part because they had everything they ever wanted. They had the Messiah, the deliverer from Rome with us. But he was more than that because he was a deliverer of sin and death too. And in fact, he would teach them to love their enemies, Rome. He was more than what they thought and they weren't getting it. And I'll be honest with you, I probably wouldn't have gotten it either. I would have been so amazed at what Jesus, who he was and what he was doing in front of me. There's no way he could die. He's too powerful. But he did. It didn't click. They didn't understand. They didn't believe it. Well, the angel had to make sure that they understood this time. And now go quickly, he says in verse 7, and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead and he is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. I don't think they're going to forget that. The woman ran quickly from the tomb. They were frightened but also filled with great joy and they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. How cool is that? On their way to the disciples, Jesus shows up on that path. How many are excited that Jesus showed up on your path? Now, this is interesting. Now they run to him. And they grasped his feet and worshiped him. You know what happened is they let go of all that suffering, all that fear, because they held on to the feet of Jesus and worshiped him. You get to let go of things when you find out Jesus is alive. He said, don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. Can we turn to John 20? John chapter 20. By the way, the, the gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, tell of the resurrection, all four gospels. Why? Because the resurrection was that important. It was such an impact on the disciples and the apostles' lives that they recorded as much as they could of the resurrection. John 20, verse 3. So they, they get to the disciples and they tell him, Peter and the other disciples started out for the tomb. John 20, verse 3. They were both running. Now, they must have had the running sandals on. They put their running sandals on. They wanted to hurry up and get there to see what was going on. You know, what I, you know what I see there? A glimmer of hope. Because the, 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 the women, now here's the thing. Now, back in this time, women's testimony wasn't upheld. So the men didn't believe at first. And so there may have been some doubt. They may have been like, I don't know, these, these ladies are crazy. What are they saying? We saw him die from a distance, though. They weren't up close like the women were. The women were faithful. They weren't as afraid. They stayed close. Right? So they're, they're like, maybe this, maybe this, I don't think this happened, but maybe it did. So they put on their running sandals. I'm just joking with that, but yeah. John 20, now John is the author of this book, and he says this. They were both running, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. That was like a little humble brag from John. That was funny. He stooped and looked in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he didn't go in. Then Simon Peter, the one who says, if I can walk on that water, just tell me and I'll come out. He goes all the way in. And he saw the linen wrappings there lying there, but he didn't. I'm sorry, that was uh, John. Then Simon Peter arrived, went inside. He also noticed the linen wrappings lying there while the cloth that had covered Jesus' head was folded up and lying apart from the other wrappings. 
Then the disciple who had reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. So now John's believing. For until that day, or until then, they still hadn't understood the scriptures that said Jesus must rise from the dead. Then they went home. So they didn't see him yet, though. And now we go to John chapter 19. I'm sorry, John chapter 20, verse 19. That Sunday evening, the disciples were meeting behind locked doors. Why were their doors locked? Because they were afraid, according to the scriptures. They were afraid of the Jewish leaders. They didn't want to be crucified next. Suddenly, Jesus was standing there among them, and he says, Peace be with you. As he spoke, he showed them the wounds in his hands and his side, and they were filled with joy when they saw the Lord. Again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. You know what this is? This was a hopeless Saturday turned into a hope-filled Sunday. Back then, yes, praise God. Now, back then, there was no name for these days, as I said before. We have Good Friday. We have Easter or Resurrection Sunday. But Saturday, some call it Holy Saturday. Some have called it No Name Saturday in some books. Today, I'm borrowing the theme Hopeless Saturday. That Saturday must have been full of despair and hopelessness. There was sorrow. There was doubt. There was grief. There was fear. And then, as Saturday passed, how many are so thankful for a new day? Aren't you thankful for a new day? I was thinking about this this past week when I opened my eyes and I saw sunlight. I was like, oh, thank God. I'm so happy for a new day because it's a new start, a new beginning, new hope, a second chance. Before the resurrection, though, this Saturday was marked by sorrow and despair, doubt, confusion, silence, the echo of Jesus' words, it is finished, rattling in their heads, and then his last breath. That's what was in their head. But as Saturday passed, a new dawn rose, so did the Son of God. Hope rose from the horizon, but hope also rose from the grave. And that's not all that rose, because something changed in these followers. Historians can't explain it except for one thing, the resurrection of Jesus. How is it that the recordings of Jesus show that they're sad, they're afraid, they're going to anoint his dead body because they didn't believe it all the way? Now, if you're trying to prove the Bible to be true, wouldn't you show everything perfectly? You wouldn't show all the flaws. They weren't setting this up. This was them. This was real. This is who they really were. They were struggling. And then something took place. Sunday morning came really early, and someone was alive, and his name was Jesus. Sorrow turned to joy. Despair turned to hope. Doubt to belief. Confusion to clarity. Worry to worship. Silence to praise, bad news to good news, fear to confidence, guilt to forgiveness, death to new life. I want to encourage you with one point today, and I'm probably going to say some other stuff after that. You don't have to be stuck in your hopeless Saturday. We can live like the resurrection happened because it did. It did. It's okay if you get excited about that. It's okay. I was talking to a brother in Christ this past week. We had an hour and 15 minute meeting. And I wanted, I wanted to stay longer. Because for three months he's been suffering, hurting, struggling to understand what God is doing in his life. Having a hard time sleeping and everything. And I said, brother, it was like the Holy Spirit just was speaking through me. Brother, you're stuck in your Saturday. He's like, what does that mean? I was like, I don't know. I just got it. <laughs> I just got it. Hold on. Let me, let me think about what I'm trying to say here. I said, you know, this reminds me of, of Holy Week. This reminds me of the weekend Jesus died. On Friday was the crisis. 
Sunday was erection, but you're, the resurrection, but you're living like it's still Saturday. Wow. The season of Saturday was going on and on and on in his life, and he had not experienced his resurrection yet. And so my heart broke for him, and I said, brother, it's already happened. It's here. It has come. The resurrection has come. Let it go. Let it go. Turn towards Jesus. Did anyone know the story about Thomas? Poor Thomas. Poor Thomas. He missed the party. They called him Doubting Thomas. John chapter 20, verse 24. It says, one of the 12 disciples, by the way, what do you think he was doing? You think he was getting his business back up and running? Maybe he was, you know, talking to his girlfriend, saying, hey, I'm not going to leave now. I'm back. Maybe he was depressed and stuck in bed, having a hard time getting out because he thought everything he knew was changing was now gone and lost. Either way, he missed the party. And verse 24 says, one of the 12 disciples, Thomas, was not with the others when Jesus came. They told him, we have seen the Lord. But he replied, I like Thomas. I like him. He said, I won't believe it unless I see the nail wounds in his hands. This is kind of weird. I'm going to put my fingers into them and place my hand into the wound inside. That is gross. But he was serious. I'm not going to believe until I, there's, there's too much phony stuff out there. I want to know that I know that I know. Eight days later, some of us are struggling in our Saturdays for a longer time than we need to. Some of us are stuck when we don't need to be stuck. Eight days later, the disciples were together again, and this time Thomas was with them. Oh, thank God. The doors were locked. Why? Because they were still afraid sometimes. But suddenly, as before, Jesus was standing among them. Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, wait a second. But Jesus wasn't there when Thomas said this. But wait a second, Jesus wasn't present when Thomas said, I won't believe until I can touch him myself. No, you see, Jesus is everywhere now because he's resurrected. He can hear your suffering. He can hear your prayers. He can hear your fears. He can hear your sorrow. If we call out to God, he is there. He heard Thomas and he wasn't in the room. Because he is interceding on our behalf before the Father, according to Scripture. He's praying for us. Thank God for that. So he says, put your finger here. Look at my hands. Put your hand into the wound of my side. Don't be faithless any longer. Believe. And Thomas said, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, you believe because you have seen me. Blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Do you see the missing, yes, praise God. Do you see the missing link here? The missing link for Thomas was, did he believe? This relationship with God that we have is a faith-based relationship. But what's amazing is there's a ton of evidence that God is alive. There's a ton of evidence that the Bible is true. And you also are walking evidence that God is real. Your testimony. You can't deny your testimony. I once was like this, but now I'm like this. I once was lost, but now I'm found. We can't deny that. You know your life better than I do. You know. The missing link is believing Jesus has already risen and is with you, that Jesus is our joy through the sorrow, hope through the hard times, confidence through the worry, belief through the doubt, good news through the bad. You know what I'm saying here, right? 
What I'm saying is, is you're not going to have a life of worry-free life. We're not going to have a sorrow-free life. We're not going to have a hopeless life at times. There's some times where you're going to feel it. But Jesus is here to live with you, to help you have that hope. Jesus is here to give you that joy, to give you that faith, to give you that strength. Well, how do you know that, Ryan? I was... I wrote some things down for this, for this message today. In my journal, I was just praying and, and reading scripture in my house. I wrote down three words I wanted to cover. Three words I wanted to make sure you hear. Because of the resurrection, we have joy. Because of the resurrection, we have hope when things feel hopeless. Because of the resurrection, we have praise. We can praise God through every circumstance. And then I'm reading the Bible, and I come across Acts 2, 25 through 28. And I couldn't believe what I read. Now, this is a prophetic word from David around 800 to 1,000 years before Jesus rose from the dead. So it's a prophecy, a foretelling of what's going to happen. It's a song or a psalm of a prayer or worship that he wrote. And this is what it says in Acts 2.25. Peter's preaching, and he uses it to, to use it as evidence that Jesus rose again. And he says this, I see that the Lord is always with me. This is David. I will not be shaken, for he is right beside me. No wonder, I love this, no wonder my heart is glad. He's with me. No wonder I'm so happy. No, no wonder you guys were so happy today. Because you believe he's right there beside you. And my tongue shouts his praises. There it is, the praise word that I wrote down in my journal. Then he says, my body rests in hope. There's the other word, hope, I wrote down in my journal. I can sleep good at night. My body rests in hope. I can slow down my mind and relax and not be so filled with anxiety and fears and worry because my body rests in the hope of Jesus Christ. Verse 27, for you will not leave my soul among the dead. Oh, there it is. You're not going to die and then stay there. You're going to rise up at the coming of Jesus Christ, the resurrection of all his saints. There it is. Or allow your Holy One, Jesus, to rot in the grave. Now, this is David saying this hundreds of years before it happened. You won't let Jesus rot in the grave. This is a promise. You have shown me the way of life, and you will fill me with the joy, there's the other word, of your presence. Mm. When I read that, I had to get out of my couch, and I just, had to, I just started worshiping God. I just started praising God because he is alive. He is with us. He is our joy, our hope. Thank God and our praise. Thomas found out eight days later, but guess what? He still found out. Church, I want to encourage you as Christians to live like the resurrection happened. I'm not saying you're not going to go through hard times. You just heard me say it. This is not a worry, sorrow-free life. We're going to have our troubles. Jesus promised that you will have trouble. But he was saying you're going to be okay because I am with you. David said that 800 to 1,000 years before, I am with you. No wonder I can be so happy. No wonder I could have hope and rest. No wonder there's praises coming off my lips because Jesus is alive. Church, let's live like the resurrection happened. Our life should be a testimony of, of fire and passion and love and joy, right? And if you feel stuck in your sorrow as a believer, I want to encourage you to let go of that. They clung onto the feet of Jesus. They, they were clinging to him. They were holding his feet and worshiping him because he was alive. Would you do something today as a believer? Would you let go of all your fear, 
all your worries, all your sorrow, all your pain, your past, your regret, your shame, let it go because Jesus is alive. You've been forgiven and set free. You've been forgiven and set free. Am I talking to anyone today? That's Jesus talking through his word today, trying to encourage us to let it go. You don't have to hold on to that because I am alive and I am with you. The worst thing, though, that we could be stuck in is sin, guilt, shame, and death. But that's exactly what the resurrection conquered. The resurrection is assurance that sin and death has been defeated by Jesus. All who believe and trust in him are forgiven, saved, and have eternal life. Jesus is alive, which means you are free and you are forgiven. And today I want to encourage you, if you are new to this church or if you're seeking God and you have not been set free from your sin, you feel stuck in it. If you didn't know that Jesus died on the cross to be set free, he did it for you. He did it for me. We were worth dying for. Isn't that beautiful? And then he said, you can have eternal life because I also am eternal life. Personally for me, I can't hold in what Jesus has done. I can't help but praise him. I can't help but be happy. Don't get me wrong. I have my days where it is rough but I can't contain Jesus. I can't stay silent. I can't stay stuck in my sorrow or my hopeless Saturdays. If the grave couldn't hold Jesus, how can I? How can I? Thank you, God. Today, would you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior, the forgiveness of your sin? Would you put your faith and hope in him, cling to him, turn away from your ways of living and turn towards Jesus? Could we close our eyes together as we pray this, as we pray together? God, I pray you would speak to those in this room today who have felt so ashamed of their sin, so much guilt and remorse. God, I pray that they would see you love them, that you've forgiven them. God, I pray that they would feel like they don't have to be stuck anymore. You came out of that grave to lift us up, to forgive us, to offer us new life. God, I pray you would do that right now, Lord, that you would open their hearts to believe this truth, this reality. Thank you, God. If you need to pray, if you need to put your faith in Jesus today, would you repeat after me? Dear God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for forgiving me of my sins. I believe I'm forgiven. I believe you rose again. And I receive eternal life. Help me as I follow you all the days of my life. Amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Is there someone in this room today who's just been overwhelmed by sorrow, grief, anxiety, fear? You know what we can do as Christians, as believers? We can worship. We can worship through the worry. We can praise him. We have a lot to celebrate, amen? So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna stand together and we're gonna celebrate. I wanna encourage you 
to let go of whatever that hopeless situation is and hold on to the hope-filled resurrection of Jesus Christ. God, we thank you. We believe you are alive, you rose again. We have so much to celebrate. Lord, through the trials, through the storm, you are with us. So we still celebrate knowing that a resurrection is coming in our lives. We thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen.